agenda. One would be the update progress of the new school buildings presented by Larry Hadley and Lane Findlay. Once they are completed, we would then have a presentation on policy 8200, which is a review of information presented by Heidi and Nick. So, uh, Larry, please, and Lane. Or the superintendent. Nope, you're good. Great board. While uh, Larry and Lane are getting set up, can I just, I know you know this already, but these two are unbelievably fantastic in terms of their role in the in the new school and the new build. So I just want to give them a shout out. Of their, what a great job they're both doing. Yep. Thank you. I have to agree. I've heard the same thing. Oh. Do you need one of these to record? Here. Nope. I'm You're going to need that. Yep. Just press the button. Larry, it might be best, unless you want to be there. Why don't, why don't we go right there? Right here. On that X, there's one, there's one, too. Yeah, use that. So perfect. Board and Superintendent, it's a privilege to be here with you today to update you on uh, our construction projects. We wanted to start, uh, Lane's actually taking some video with a drone to give you the most recent pictures. Um, today I met with the junior high. Every Wednesday we meet and do a site walk and what's called an OAC meeting, an owner, architect, and contractor meeting. We do that on Thursdays for the high school and the elementary we do every other Wednesday afternoon down in Salt Lake until we break ground, which is coming up very soon. So we just wanna take a minute and kind of update you on all three bills. And we're going to start off with Lane's video, just to show you some pictures. All right, I'll, I'll give you just a little background before we get started. Um, a few years ago, we we had a need to have some uh, drone footage. We needed some aerials and stuff, and it's quite expensive to hire somebody to do that. And so I thought, oh, it can't be that hard to get a drone license, right? And we'll just do it ourselves. Um, it was a little more challenging than I thought because I don't know anything about being a pilot, but uh, they, they want you to know that kind of stuff. But uh, so about three years ago, I went and got my license uh, and we purchased a drone. And we've used it a lot uh, at school sites for assessments and, of course, for our bond projects. Not only current projects, but going back and highlighting past projects on, on past bonds and so uh, it's really been a great resource and it's a great escape for me to go out and fly and hopefully not end up in a tree somewhere uh, but we've saved a lot of money uh, doing that way so uh, this video is about three minutes it's just going to give you an overview of the projects that are currently under construction uh, the new high school uh, Westfield the new junior high Mountain View and um, and so those two projects will be highlighted on the video and you can see where we're at. I tried to do it as progression, so you'll see when we started with the big open fields and then uh, where we're at as of just a couple weeks ago. Will you cover the challenges so far? I can do that.
August 24th? That is correct. We are on track, and I just asked Lane if he could kind of back it up. Mountain View is uh, the first school you saw the Mavericks, and I just wanted to talk about the junior high real quick, just so you can see what actually is, has been built and, and what you're actually viewing. Um, he's just going to get a little further. Are those tilt up walls or are those CME? Those are the uh, ICF, the outside walls. I just had the numbers backward. Yeah, the yeah I'm with you. <laughs> um, just a little further. So we get that. Yeah, that'd be great. Is that okay? A um, couple of things, a couple of highlights I want to point out to you. This is uh, school is on track and going up very, very quickly. Uh, every slab has been poured, and we have uh, walls and decking. In fact, this first part of the building you can see on the far left is uh, that's area A, and that's your science pot, and they are actually starting to sheetrock that. Really? Yep. Wow. Started today. Uh, the next area, and that's the science pod, and then you get your learning stairs kind of in the middle, and the next pond you can see is some classrooms. The middle part, you can start to see just a few walls is your office, and then you turn, and you get your cafeteria, gymnasium, and CTE area. You can see kind of the parking lot areas, and the reason I asked Lane to stop on this is kind of something interesting. If you can see on the corner of the building itself, you'll see where the two side walls are there, both kind of black. <coughs> and above them, that's actually where the marquee is going to go. It is not a normal marquee, it's a screen TV. And it's on both sides. So as parents drop off, they'll be able to see it, and you can see it from 2700. Plus it's not up in the air. Correct. The country community. And we can dim it at night. Perfect. So there's no lights. Um, but I can't <laughs> express enough how, how well this one's going. We've actually worked with the seminary. If you want to know where that is, it's kind of straight off. Ivory Holmes is building right behind there, yep, and the seminary is going to kind of sit right uh, in that area. They were a secure property in some we, started. Yep, Ivory Homes gave them two lots, and really? worked, mm -hmm, we worked with their architect. Gave um, them two, huh? two yeah, yep. What kind so, of? Well, Kind they didn't even give me the details, and I didn't ask. As <laughs> long as we get a seminary building. That'll be right. Yeah. Um, you'll see the bus drop off is kind of off to the left, where your student drop off is the parking lot you're looking at, and then your fields kind of wrap around behind and there in the front. Uh, it is coming along very, very well. Um, is there, um, one of the things about that marquee is I had to bring in Nick. Uh, last week because when we talk issues, I want to give you this one issue. It is still materials. We are trying to order materials a year in advance just to reconcile any issues that may come. Um, Decked on is a, just, a, just a problem, but we're trying to get all of our switches and electrical, anything of that nature in as early as we possibly can. We did the bleachers. Uh, it was a discussion with Brock and Matt to get the bleachers ordered and the colors and the logo on them. Uh, so we have everything in advance ordered up. Had a great OAC meeting today. Um, any questions I can answer for you on the junior high? Great. There's fencing up, is there not? Fencing all around it. Yeah, fencing all around it. And if you're looking, the road has been paved. We paved the road, which is Wilson Lane. It's been paved all the way back. We just haven't striped it because we don't want people driving on it. But it's worked out very well. That road right there is paved all the way down. If you look real close, bus shop's right there. <laughs> yes, it is. So, Stone's throw. Yep. So is that is that piece of property to the green where Lane's Kirscher is? Is that the part that the West Valley or the West Davis State is trying to develop? Um, not that piece. No, not that I. That Ivory Homes is right up to that, and I think it's just the next piece. Do you see a box in the middle? Yes. Yeah, I think it's just past that. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what I was wondering. Okay. Lane, do you mind going to the high school? Because this has two. This has two gyms, right? Two gyms. Yep. Two gyms. One on each level. That are stacked. Oh. Main gym on the oh, first level, them. and then and it's stacked and kind of offset a little bit. And there's a track that runs all the way around the top. Gym. Okay. So yep. I was in the mindset of South when we. No, not side by side. They're above each other and offset just a bit. Perfect. That's a great. It's gonna, it's gonna work out well. Yeah. Moving to the high school site, we're looking at the Westfield. What I wanted to show here is kind of what they're building first. These are your areas of your gym, your weight room, uh, and your lockers. 
are going up first. That's what these buildings are right here. <clears throat> you can see over here on the, the right, kind of in the front portion, you can see the footprint of the footings. The issue with these guys is the cement. We finally back up to speed and Hogan has done a wonderful job. We had about 52 to 55 employees and we bumped it to 72 because they brought in two other uh, footings and foundation crews to catch up. So the footprint tomorrow will actually be finished of this school. So that's pretty important for us. Um, it's going up very well. Materials is an issue, it's just so much bigger and there's just so much more. Um, I sit in these BIM, <laughs> these BIM meetings, which is a 3D meeting where they show you all the pipes, conduits, <laughs> And then they start turning it and moving it. And it's like a lagoon ride, and I start throwing up about 20 minutes into it. I'm like, you got to slow down on the turn, man. <laughs> um, but there, it's just amazing uh, how much work goes into one of these. Architects have been working really hard. Hogan's doing a great job. Uh, the issue we have here, besides materials, is once again water. And I can just spend a minute, if you don't mind. Uh, this road right here is 4,300. 4300 has every possible utility running down it and no one's really set a standard which was our problem I, I feel a, a better analogy is like we're the last dog to the bowl because when you cut open that road which we've done we were supposed to be looking at a 24 inch sewer pipe and it's 42 inches oh but that's not the biggest problem. There is a pressure gas line and then Hooper's irrigation line, and Hooper irrigation line is 18 inches below the road. And you're supposed to have a foot between them, each pipe. So between the Hooper irrigation, the sewer pipe, the gas pipe, and there's two other pipes that we're still working on the entities, we'd be about nine feet deep where we have to pump it from one side of the road to the other. We've offered four different solutions and have been shot down, but that's okay. We've got a solution five, six, and seven we're working on, and we're closing in on, on draining those fields. What I'm talking about is the collection ponds here in the front, and that's the fields back there, the baseball and softball, and actually, uh, from last week, the backstops and fencing are in. Yep, the backstop and fencing is all in. I'm sorry, I missed that. You're okay. Where you're at is football? Uh, football's right right there. Okay. He's on, you're right on football. Okay. And if he comes over to the right, that's your softball, and in front of that's your baseball. Okay, and where are you to the east? And there's a retention pond right behind the baseball. And then you come here, there's a parking lot. Okay. okay. And then there's some retention ponds up here. Okay. We're, f we're uh, landscaping those okay. retention ponds to flow all together so we can flow it out north to a slough in the back there. That's our, our plan we're working on currently. Uh, we also met with um, the seminary building and it is all fenced off. Uh, there are some issues before we got it fenced. I think Hogan lost a golf cart one day, it was stolen at night, <laughs> but it is now all fenced off. So where is that? What, where's where the, the fence? Is? No, the seminary building. Seminary building is gonna be kind of down here where this red line is. Okay. So down by the church. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly right. And as you walk out of the school, there's kind of, you walk through that parking lot right to the center building. Okay, thank you. Okay. It's, it's still on time. Hogan, uh, we met uh, six, seven weeks ago, and we redid their timeline knowing the cement is put them back nine weeks. So we were able to do a lot of different things, kind of out of order of construction, but it's, it's all going to mesh together. So they've been great on that as well. We don't have any pictures of the elementary, but I'd just like to take just a minute to talk about the elementary. Um, we got the agreements yesterday. I forwarded those to Robert and to Heidi. It's not the GMP, but it's actually the contractual agreements, uh, kind of the boilerplate stuff that the, every contractor uses that Robert and Heidi are reviewing. The, dra the design documents are at 90%, and so they're going out to the subs right uh, soon and we plan to make break ground in December. So uh, completion date there is June of 2024. Lane, Nick, uh, Dave and I, was along with eight MHTN, sat down with uh, a big group and we went over the safety for the elementary. We, we looked at every pod, door, 
tree, bullard, entry, exit. Uh, it was kind of a long meeting. <laughs> Nick was great. I was like, man, Nick, this is going to be long. <laughs> and he was great. Uh, we have a great safety plan. I thought Lane did a wonderful job and Dave as well. And from that safety plan, we moved forward to our door hardware plan. Um, so the elementary is coming along. And remember, that is from Westland, not Hogan. So those are our three builds. Can I answer any possible questions for you? Have they solved the concrete problem? Yes, um, it's coming back. It's just not back on schedule. Okay. It's they have it now. It's kind of a little bit of the mercy who they're delivering to. Okay. But yeah, we're we're way better than what we were. Right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yep. All right. <laughs> One of our issues is the uh, Rocky Mountain Power. We need some power poles moved, which was great. The Rocky Mountain sent the holding pole crew, but I said, we can't hold it until you actually move it. And so they're like, that's a valid point. So we're trying to get the moving crew there first, um, but we're working with them, and that's actually scheduled for October 8th. But everything else, we should be on schedule. It's, it's a big bill. It's a beautiful building. Um, I try to keep Superintendent Butters <laughs> probably too informed with my questions and texts. But we are working on each building, and we plan to 2024 open all three. Thank you, Larry. We only do this once every 30 years. So. Well, I don't think we've ever done three at a time. I don't know that we've and ever so, done three at a time. <laughs> there's a lot of meetings, and sometimes I'm like, okay, I'll get back to you on that. But it's it's been great. Um, the, the contractors on both sides and the architects, you, you got some good people working with you. So thanks for your time. And at any time you can ask me a question, I can be reached every day. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. You bet. Thank you, Larry and Lane and everybody that helped get that uh, workshop together. And uh, now we will go to yeah. Nick and Heidi, please. Hi. You want this? This is fine. We'll share. We'll share. Like singing a duet. <laughs> <laughs> I just, okay. Dottie of Bird. <laughs> Dottie. Um, we're presenting the library policy and review, the library review policy. It's been a long day. <laughs> Uh, to the board tonight for approval on second reading and we wanted to let the board know in this setting some of the changes that were made we'll obviously show this in open meeting as well with the during the, the regular board session um, we continue to receive lots of feedback I believe superintendent butters compiled all the feedback that we received and sent that to you even after she received or compiled all that feedback, there was additional feedback, and then she, I think she sent that on to you. So know that those of us who have been working on the policy review every email, every letter, um, I don't think we had any phone calls that you took, but everything that came in from, uh, from the public. And at the end of the day, we determined to make a couple of changes. One of the changes is the list that is identified as, as what what is the basis or the criteria for determining if something is educationally suitable as books are selected and then also as books are challenged on the grounds of being not educationally suitable what criteria are we going to look at and weigh um, and we heard some feedback that the list is lengthy and could we condense that and, and narrow it down a little bit um, so, so we did that. We took the list out to the folks whose job it is to engage in the selection process, the librarians in our district, and they went through it and, and said, yeah, there's some things that probably aren't necessary on this list, and there are some things that really say the same thing in a couple of different sections. But they did reiterate, and, and Nick can speak to this in more detail because he's the one who had the conversation with them, they did reiterate how important it is to have a broad selection criteria because there are so many reasons that a librarian chooses to select a particular book for, for his students. Um, there are reasons that might apply to one kid, another reason to pick a different book for, for another kid, and their job is really to present a wide array of materials for the entire student body. And so while they recognize that some of the criteria was redundant and not necessary, they also urge Nick to let the board know how important it is to have a, a, a lengthier rather than a skinnier 
list because they want to make sure that they are bringing in books that are a wide array of materials. Um, and if you look at the list, there's, there's not very many that we think ought to be removed because they really are all things that librarians look at when determining if it's something to bring into the library. And of course, I don't know if we mentioned this in past meetings, but it, it's rarely one factor that a librarian says, oh, this is, this is why we need this. This is accurate and timely. Let's bring it in. It's usually a lot of the factors. And in fact, the more factors from the list a particular piece of material, a particular work has, then the greater the argument for bringing it into the, the library. And so they're not just looking to see, if, oh, A is checked. Let's select that book. Let's bring it in. They're looking at all of these factors in a, um, in, you know, as a whole and in determining based on the entire content of the book and the, a lot of different criteria whether or not it would be appropriate for the, for the library. Do you want to add anything else to that? I, I, would, I would just, I maybe say, <clears throat> when, we, when I sent the email to the librarians, I asked them, I said, you know, think about your actual selection process. When you look at a book, what are the things you're thinking of? And, and match those to the words there. And, and if there's something that doesn't belong, then we'll, we'll remove it. And, and I just want to uh, attest to the um, to this this process has been valuable for me in, in my own career development is um, you know I, I feel like the librarians in general um, were uh, were feeling more like hey let's leave this let's leave it a really lengthy list and Heidi and I tend to agree with the public feedback we were getting that said no we could pare this down a little bit and um, so then we approached them and said let's our, our, as Heidi said is there is there a way that that words that mean the same thing? Are there ways we could pare this down? And um, I, I really felt like the selection criteria here is an attestment, uh, it's, it's a testament to the, a testament, sorry, to the um, us working together with the community to try to have a policy that fits every student. Because again, the library is the hub of learning in the school. And um, the, the, the selection criteria, uh, the way that it's landed here, um, to me is, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. Does the board have any questions about that particular change? Great. Yes. Um, certified librarians. So there's 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 elementary librarians that they are aides, and and I approached the secondary certified librarians that have a degree in library science. Any other questions? Great. Um, the other change we we made, and I, I know you seeing a lot of feedback about the makeup of the reconsideration committee and whether we have identified an appropriate makeup of that committee. The previous draft of the policy that was presented last month included three educators and, excuse me, four educators, a library media specialist, the administrator, and two teachers, and three parents. Parents um, coming from uh, community council, the PTA, and we had presented one parent selected at random. Based on the feedback we received to add more parents to that committee, we, we did. We added another parent to the committee, so now there are four um, employees of the school district and four parent representatives. The parent representatives would be made up of a member of the school's community council, a member of the school's PTA, and then two that are selected randomly through the list of enrolled students at the school. Again, any parent can decline to sit on the reconsideration committee, and if they do, then the administrator would just go to the next person on the list. Any questions about the makeup of the committee? Okay. Um, the only other change we made is that we did realize, and, and we've had lots of discussions about this particular point, with an even number of individuals on a reconsideration committee, there's a possibility that there could be a tie, where four individuals say, we think that the book should be retained, um, and four individuals say, we think the book should be removed. And we, we hope it's not broken down by um, employee versus parents. We hope that our employees and parents are all working together and that we may have two employees, two parents that say retain, and two employees and two parents that say remove. But in the event that there's a tie, we, we wanted to present something in the policy that um, is a tiebreaker. And if there's a tie on that committee, it would go to the district reconsideration committee. 
so that the district then can go through the entire process again and look at what the school committee did and make the determination. So, and those are the only changes. Those are the changes. Any questions or thoughts? Jen, if you look like you have a question. Yes, make sure you speak in your mic. Please do. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Loud and clear. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> I, first of all, appreciate the great deal of work that has gone in. Nick, Heidi, parents group, superintendent, I'm very appreciative because I know that it hasn't been easy. My one thing that I, I can imagine, I just know that everyone will agree with, <laughs> is I would ask that we have a total analysis of the success of the process October 1, 2023. And uh, talk about, you know, how did, did you have trouble getting parents to be involved? Uh, how many uh, questionable uh, literary pieces came forward that were to be analyzed? Just a real complete thorough so that we know if yeah. the process is effective and working. I think it's a great idea. And it's a very good idea. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll commit to, to making sure our library department keeps good record and track and, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do some kind of presentation. Sure. Yeah. Thank that you that so seems much. reasonable. Do you want to speak to the website? Yeah, so, and I, well, I, I, I was maybe could pull up and show you, but um, we, you know, part of this is a reconsideration uh, form that a parent needs to fill out. and. Early on, the feedback we got from the community was let's don't, let's, let's don't make it a really arduous process because we don't want to we don't want to you know people to not do it if, if they if they feel strong and so um, we've already added on our school on our Weber School District website if we go under departments and if you go under either you know digital teaching and learning which is the department I'm under or media services. There's a board policy link, and you can click on that and already get to the reconsideration form. So that's already there as of today. So I, you know, I'm I'm assuming um, if if a parent wants to start the process, if if the board approves the the policy, um, the process could be started as soon as a parent feels it necessary. Is that instant? I mean, does that take a day or a week? To or? do the form. Once the form's submitted. So once the form is submitted, then it would be incumbent on the administrator to walk through depending on what the basis for the request for reconsideration is. If the no, base I meant the one for the individual student to be denied that book. Is that not Oh, yeah, if an individual, if a parent yes. says, we don't yes. want my child to read, that absolutely can be. Indeed. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. what I want yeah. okay, thank, thank you for pointing that out. So just to say that again, in case anybody didn't hear, beginning, as soon as the board adopts this policy, if the board adopts the policy, that if a parent requests that a particular work or book be restricted, that their student not be allowed access to that book in the library, then that student will not be allowed access to that book in the library. And we will be given, we'll tell, um, make sure our the librarians are aware that you may be getting requests from parents that say, don't allow my kid to check out whatever book, and, and please honor that. We, we, that's already you in the tell, software. How will that process work? Is it an electronic notification? Yeah. So we ask in the policy that they that the parent requested in writing, and we'll keep we'll have the school keep record of that. And um, the the librarian in their software in their uh, checkout software, when they when they pull up a student, boom, a note pops up. If there is a note on the student, a note will pop up next to the student's name. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, please. It's got to go red. Stand by. Here. I got one for you. What if a parent doesn't like a book in the classroom? Is that the same immediate? That's a good question. That's a different process, and we are working on that policy as well. Instructional material is defined in this law as any material 
that is used during instructional, uh, used for instruction, including library materials. This policy is specific to instructional material in the library media centers. Instructional material that's used for curriculum purposes is still subject to the same sensitive material restrictions. Um, and typically, if a parent, this has been practiced for years and years, if a parent is not comfortable with a particular assignment or book that's being read in class, they can always reach out to the teacher and say, I'd like to have my child read a different assignment. But we will make that clear in a policy that we're working through to include the sensitive material language for curriculum instructional materials as well. Thank you. Board, do you have anything else? Just thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We will see you in uh, 15 minutes, and uh, we'll call this work session, study session to a close so that we can get our entertainment set up and ready. Uh, the board will have a break. We'll see you at 6 o'clock. Okay. <laughs>